Okay. So hello everyone. Today it's now our great pleasure to have Dr. Joy Harris and uh, Angela from our ECE advising office to have this advising session for our ECE 3030. So they are going to answer your questions regarding the curriculum and the degree requirements for the computing engineering program. So without further ado, so let's have uh, Dr. Harris to get started. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, hi, everyone. Since I cannot see your faces, you are a bunch of blue screens. Oh, it looks like I'm talking to a bunch of boxes. I want to remind you all that when I'm sharing my screen, I cannot see the chat. And the whole point of advising is for you all to be able to ask any questions that you want. Ms. Ellaby is here. She can see the chat. So Ms. Ellaby, if you see a question posed in the chat, could you just, you know, just, just stop and we'll, we'll address that question. So ask your questions anytime. Also, okay. feel free to unmute and, and ask your question. Uh, it, we want you to interrupt us as much as possible. All right. Are there any questions in the chat yet, Ms. Ellaby? No, not yet. All right. Can Cameron you all just say, type in the chat? Say hello, Ethan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say hello. <laughs> Hey, Cam, Cameron. Cameron said afternoon, everyone. All right. Hello, oh, it Cameron. is afternoon. <laughs> it is. My my mother called me yesterday at 1.30. She's in Mississippi, Central Standard Time, and she says, good morning. Uh -huh. And I said, it's not morning in either of our time zones. So <laughs> why? <laughs> but see, she just woke up because that's what you can do when you are retired. You can sleep. You're right. Until that's true. <laughs> So y'all, the moral of the story is I want to be retired mm -hmm. when I grow up. That's it. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. until then, <laughs> yes, let's, let's get to advising. So we're going to walk you through the graduation worksheet for you all for, for Compies. We show both EE and Compi, but we're focusing on the Compi worksheet. Ms. Ellaby, is this worksheet located online or is it still only in the undergraduate office? It's only in the undergraduate office right now, yes. Because, okay. yeah. Um, what I can do also um, is post this on um, the Canvas site. Okay. All right. Great. I could say, well, you know, if they request one, we can send one to them. Okay. Good. Yes. Yeah. So if you want this worksheet, we can email it to you. But yeah, I think it'll be easy enough just to add it to the Canvas site. And that way you'll be able to download it for, uh, for advising. Okay. Yeah. But this is what we're going to, we're going to walk, walk you through now. Um, so. The first thing to remember, everyone, is when you apply to graduate, you know, it's, it's coming up sooner than you know. When you apply to graduate, this is the course worksheet that your advisors are going to fill out. And so you can use Degree Works as a guide, but this worksheet, your advisors aren't going to look at Degree Works and say, oh, well, Degree Works has a check. This worksheet is actually what they're going to fill out. So that's why we want to show it to you to make sure that you're aware of how your degree requirements are going to count. Um, everything at the top, these are your, you know, your, your institute core requirements and your ECE lower level requirements. Uh, in addition, so you see your calculuses, chemistries, your physics, and then your ECE core classes. And then your English classes, econ, history, all of that's at the top. Uh, one, just one second. Right. At the bottom, this is where we get into your ECE upper level electives. So remember, you have a professional communications requirement, which is filled by 2035 and 2036 in your 2000 level. But also, you have to take ECE 3005 and the new class ECE 3005 CIR, which is the previous 3006. So we do have a whole slide about the difference between the two, but that's your, your a sophomore and junior professional communications requirement. Your junior level required courses are 30, 20, 30, 30, and 30, 56, slash 30, 57. Again, same course, different numbers. And then you have ECE or CS electives, 22 credit hours. You have to take 22 credit hours of electives, either in ECE or CS. And then for those 22, at least nine of those credit hours have to be at the 4,000 level with 3,000 level prereqs, okay? So they have to be 
at the 4,000 level with 3,000 level prereqs. And you'll see on the sheet here, the ECE slash CX 4XX9, that's those uh, nine credit hours. So it'll be roughly three classes, three credit hours a piece that your advisor will write here when you apply to graduate. The remaining 13 credit hours can be any combination of three and 4,000 level classes with or without prereqs. And if you decide to take graduate courses, those will count towards the nine credit hours of 4K with through K prereqs. Okay. What are your questions about your junior required classes, your 4,000 and 3,000 level electives, the, four, the 4K electives with 3K prereqs, CS electives, okay, we, questions? We, yep. do, we do have a question that do you apply to graduate to graduate the semester you plan to graduate or before then? You applied yeah. the semester prior. The semester prior. So if you plan on graduating this May, you should apply this semester to graduate. And I normally send, I, I would send out a email to students to, to um, tell them when it's time to uh, apply for graduation. The, if you apply for spring, you should have got that email um, a few weeks ago to apply for spring graduation. So go back and check your email. And, and if you want to graduate in spring, but you didn't receive the email, still you know, check in because this is done the semester before graduation. Thank you. Thank you for asking that question. What other questions do you all have so far? Okay. When it comes That's to it. choosing, yeah, okay, all right. For your ECE and CS electives, you can choose your electives in any area. And I wanna show you all, I'm gonna exit the slideshow and show you all now how our electives are listed. On the ECE website, there are computer engineering threads now you are not required to take your classes to take any number of classes in a thread but you are welcome to take your electives in any thread that you want so prior to this semester our electives were grouped by technical interest now our electives are grouped by thread and these are the computer engineering threads again you do not have to take any set number of classes within a thread but when you're deciding on your three and 4,000 level electives, this is a way for you to determine which electives you wanna take. And this is on the ECE website. Uh, if you can see the address here is ece.gotech.edu slash computer dash engineering dash degree. So computer engineering degree. Um, you can also Google ECE Gotech threads. That's what I do every single time I wanna find it, but it's, it's within the academic section. So the, the choices that you have, are distributed systems and software, cybersecurity, computer, uh, computing hardware and emerging architecture, devices, information inner networks, systems and architecture, robotics, telecommunications, and signals information processing. You can take your ECE or CS electives up to 22 credit hours in any of these areas. If you click on one of the threads, so let's say that I'm interested in cybersecurity, if I click on cybersecurity, <clears throat> then all of the classes that are within cybersecurity are listed here. Now, what you'll see is these classes being required, but for you, they are not required. You are welcome to take any class in this list that you have the prereqs for, and you can take any class. So you can take the required class, you can take the cybersecurity class. You don't have to pick two, you can take any combination. All right, and that's for, any of the computer engineering threads. Okay. What are your questions about the way that you choose your electives? Because this is how you choose them. Questions. No questions at this time. All right, perfect. Perfecto. Then I will go here. All right. You also have a prob stats requirement. There are four classes, one of four classes that you can take to fulfill your prob stats requirement. And by the way, 
even uh, as we move forward, if you think about a question related to something that I've already covered, feel free to ask that question as well. It's, it's okay. Um, like if you think of something about the threads while I'm talking about prop stats, that's fine. You can still ask the question, okay? You know, sometimes things pop into our minds. For prop stats, there are four classes that you can take. You would just take one. And the way that the class that you take depends on or determines how it counts. If you take the CEE or the ISYE version of prop stats, so CEE 3770 or ISYE 3770, that's going to count as a non-ECE engineering elective. You have to get five credit hours of non-ECE engineering electives, and this will count for three of them. If you take the ECE 3077, it's going to count as one of your 22 ECE elective hours, so three of them. It will count towards your ECE elective hours. Okay, it won't be as, if you take the ECE version, it'll count towards those 22 credit hours of 3K, 4K electives. If you take the math 3670, it's going to count as an approved elective. The math 3670, while it does fulfill the requirement, is my least favorite option because it's an approved elective. And either of the others, the CEE, the ISYE, or the ECE, are going to count towards something else. They're either going to get towards your ECE electives or your non-EC non engineering electives. Uh, for the math, it's just going to be an approved elective. And unless you have another reason, like you're minoring in math or something like that, uh, there, it, as an approved elective, there are lots. There's so many fun approved electives that you can take. Questions about prof stats? The 3K, 4K electives at 22 hours. You know. No questions at this time. All right, perfect. Then you have your non-EC engineering electives. And the, the short story is you can take any class in the College of Engineering, but outside of ECE. So that means it can't be cross-listed with ECE. 2,000 level or higher, two credit hours or more. So if it's in the College of Engineering, meaning it's an AE, an ME, there has to be an E, but it cannot be an electrical or computer engineering class. So if it's in COE, but outside of ECE, 2,000 level or higher, two credit hours or more, you can take it. The exceptions are at the bottom. You cannot take any of these classes at the bottom. BMED 2400, uh, CHBE 2120, COE 3002, ISYE 2027, ISYE 2028, ME 2016, ME 2110, or uh, COE 2701. You cannot take any of those classes to fulfill this requirement. Those classes would be approved electives. Any other class is fair game. Uh, we do have a few recommendations, but again, if you look at the any class, the, the whole Georgia Tech catalog within the College of Engineering is a fair, it's, it's your oyster. Take what you like. Uh, but these, our students tend to do well in and they tend to find helpful. Materials are, so MSE 2001 is uh, Applied Materials, COE 2001 Statics, uh, 2100 and CHBE Chemical Process Principles. Of course, the prop stats, many students do take ISYE or CE prop stats for their non ec engineering electives. Also, the ISYE 3232 and 4031 and uh, 3039. Um, those are good classes to take if you're interested in manufacturing systems, regressions, forecasting, or, or quality methods. Um, thermal, fluids and thermal engineering, ME 3720. I actually, I took uh, fluids and thermal engineering when I was at Georgia Tech. It was very helpful. And then NRE 3208, nuclear, fundamentals of nuclear and radiological engineering, or uh, NRE 3101, radiation physics, and then the AE or ME 4701, wind energy. These are just a few recommendations. Again, you don't have to take them. You can take any class in the College of Engineering that you like, but these classes are kind of cool. If you are, if you're looking for suggestions, we recommend these. All right, for your professional communications requirement, remember that you do have to take either ECE 3005 or 3005 CIR. 3005 CIR is the former ECE 3006. So you may have had cohorts before you who took 3006. The new course number is 3005 CIR. The difference between the two, both of them are uh, 2031 is a prereq. If you do 3005 is a traditional one credit hour lecture based course. If you do 3005 CIR, it's a one credit hour pass fail course that you take at the same time 
as your internship, your co-op, or your research experience. Internship, co-op, or research. So you have to be registered for 3005 CIR during the same term or the same semester that you're doing an internship or a co-op or a research experience. You cannot do it after. Uh, 3005 CIR has always been a completely online course, even before COVID. <laughs> it was on, always online versus 3005, the traditional course is uh, it's an interactive real-time lecture-based course. All right. Um, you also will have part of your senior design sequence will fulfill the remaining piece of your communications requirement. Now, what are your questions about 3005? 3005 CIR that you take with an internship or co-op or research, or your electives, threads, prop stats. There is a yep. question. Yep. Um, the student asks, it regular 3005 pass fail? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Both 3005 and 3005 CIR are pass fail courses. And they're only offered pass fail, by the way. So it doesn't count towards the pass fail classes that you get because they're only offered pass fail. Thank you for asking asking that that clarifying question. Other other questions about anything at all? Yes, here was one. What is the process to get research internship approved for 3005 CIR? Okay, when you register for 3005 CIR, you'll list the internship that you're taking. And so, so after you register for the course, Professor Holcomb is going to reach out to you and you'll just say which internship or, or research or co-op that you're taking. Uh, so in other words, they're not going to uh, approve it. Like there's no, no process that says this is acceptable versus this is not. As long as you have the experience, it, it counts. It, it's, it's approved. They've never turned down a, an internship or a co-op or a research experience. Other other questions? As of now, no, that's it. All right, okay. All right, next we have uh, senior design. You all have a bunch of options. Now, as we are transitioning our curriculum, the course numbers for senior design have changed and the options for senior design have changed. On the worksheet, what you'll see is 4011 and 4012. Uh, as we solidify the course numbers, that will change. But basically, you have a two-semester senior design sequence, and you get to decide what, what you take. If you do traditional, let's see, uh, okay, do we, still, do we still have 4011 and then 4871, Ms. Ellaby? 4011 Four, is still there. No. Okay. 4011, well, last, time, last time 4011 was taught this past summer. That was a lot, okay. so... So right. now so, it's 4871 this fall. Okay. So it's 4871 and then 4873. All right. Yes. So your your options are uh, either you can do the ECE version of senior design where you take 4871 and 4873. You can do the CreateX senior design option. But if you do Create X Senior Design, then that means you would take 3872 Junior Design, and then you can do the Create X Senior Design option, which is the the interdisciplinary. And you you see the it's still 4873, but the section is going to be X, and or you can do the GT, the Georgia Tech Interdisciplinary um, Senior Design, which is. Blah, 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 blah. That is a, it's 4873, but it's a different section as well. All right. So all um, of the. I, I think, um, yep. Joelle, I think they changed them all to ECE 4873 now. So yep. it's no yes. longer GT. Yes. yes, it is 4873. So it used to be GT 4823, but now it is 4873. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for, for the, the three options, if you wanted to do either the Create X, Capstone Senior Design, or the what used to be the Georgia Tech Interdisciplinary Senior Design, but that means you will be in Senior Design with several different majors. If you want to do either of those options, then you need to take ECE 3872 Junior Design. If you want to do the traditional two-semester sequence of Senior Design for ECE, then you would take 4871 
and 4873. You do have to take 4871 and 4873 back to back. And keep in mind, neither the second semester of senior design, no second semester senior design is offered in the summer. And 3872, the junior design is not offered in the summer as well. So you have to do it in fall and spring. Okay, all right, so one more time. If you do junior design 3872, then you can do your second semester of 4873, either with CreateX or the interdisciplinary, the Georgia Tech interdisciplinary team. They're all 4873 as a course number, it's just different sections. If you do the ECE only senior design, the two classes that you take are 4871 and 4873. You have to take 4871 and 4873 back to back. So you would take it either fall, spring or spring, fall. Are we offering 4871 in the summer now, Ms. Ellaby? Um, it has not been confirmed yet. At this point, right. So at this, okay. Yeah. Maybe in the future, but right now it's not being offered in the summer. So you wanna knock out your senior design sequence in the fall and the spring. Because I know senior design too uh, will never, it won't be offered in the summer because it's not enough time for you to do a substantial project. But uh, senior design one, maybe it'll be offered in the summer in the future, but right now it's not. Okay. Now, uh, I also want to throw it out there. Is everybody familiar with what you do in senior design so that you can make an informed decision of which set of courses you would take? Just type it in the chat. Is everybody familiar with the format of senior design and what you do in senior design? If Some said design, no, and not, okay. not really. So can you go over that? Okay, um, if you, so you're every, every engineering student, every college of engineering student has a capstone course. And the purpose of capstone is to pull together everything that you have learned and apply it to some, some physical product, some tangible product. So in senior design, you're gonna make something that is relevant to electrical or computer engineering. If you do uh, the, the ECE option, you're gonna make something with electrical and computer engineers. If you do the interdisciplinary option, you would make something, you might be an electrical engineer, a computer engineer, a mechanical engineer in aerospace. It may be a whole bunch of you, different majors on the team. And, but you are gonna create something. And then if you do the capstone, the create X capstone, again, you're going to create something, but the difference is what you create would be your own idea. For the other senior designs, you're, you're creating a project, but that project can be pitched by someone from industry, like a corporate affiliate, or it can be pitched by some, a professor here for a research lab. But if you do the create X, then you're working on your own idea. The other thing about senior design is uh, if you in your first semester, if you do 3872 junior design, you're learning tools for building. So there are three modules and you're learning, uh, you're learning systems engineering, how you program, bring stuff together as a system. Um, you'll do a little bit of coding, you'll do a little bit of hardware, you, you'll do a, a, just a bunch of different things to help with your hands-on design skills. The first, the, if you do the 4000 level 4871, then you do project research. There aren't any lectures for 4871. It's all studio based. So you'll form your team and you'll start researching your, your project. You also have the option to bring, to, to use your VIP. If you are in a VIP team for four semesters, then you can also use your VIP project for senior design. So the whole point of senior design is for you to, uh, it's for you to create, you know, it's project based learning you're going to have a six hour lab where you're creating and building something. And it's just a question of what do you wanna build? Do you wanna build your own thing? Do you wanna build something pitched by industry? Do you wanna build something that you've worked on as a VIP team or, or your research? That, that's, you get to decide based on the course that you take. Okay, I have a student who has a, they have a, student who has a question for 3005. They okay. ask, if I take the class, should I take the class during the internship or co-op, or can I take the class without internship or co-op? Okay, if you take 3005 CIR, then you have to take it at the same time as your internship or co-op, or research, at the same time. So even if you're interning during the summer, you have to take 3005 CIR 
during the summer at the same time as your internship. But if you do just 3005, the traditional, then you don't have to take, you, you don't have to have an internship for a, a co-op at all. So you can take that anytime that you want, fall, spring, or summer. Okay, but the CIR section, just the CIR section is what's tied to an internship, a co-op or research, and you do have to take it at the same time. So keep in mind, it's a one credit hour pass fail course. Even if you take it in the summer and you're not taking any other classes, you still pay tuition for that one credit. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you are on a scholarship though, your scholarship, if you're on Hope or Zell, for example, uh, your scholarship will pay for that credit during the summer. Okay, I have another question. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Is yeah, the yeah. traditional or the multidisciplinary senior design the one where the project is pitched by industry? Yes. So the the multidisciplinary senior design is a definite yes, it will be pitched. Uh, industry affiliates will come and pitch projects. The ECE, traditional senior design, <clears throat> Uh, it can be a combination of both. Sometimes you'll have ECE professors who pitch a project and sometimes you'll have industry who pitches projects. But yeah, it's gonna be um, a, a, a project will be pitched to you. And a lot of our industry affiliates will pitch projects to the senior design, either of them. The ECE traditional one or the, the uh, GT interdisciplinary one. Yes. Other, other questions? As of now, no. All right, all right, keep them coming, y'all. All right, we do have, and this is on our website, the flow chart. And of course, you are welcome to take your classes. You can take any combination of classes that you want. The key takeaway from the flow chart is how your classes count. So remember, for your catalog year, all the classes in blue, they are required and you have to get a C or better. All of the classes in white, um, they're required, you have to get a D or better. You have to take them for a letter grade and a D is done. Don't aim for Ds, but D is done, okay? <laughs> Every class that is in the hashtag pattern, your science elective, humanities electives, social science electives, your approved electives. If you came into Georgia Tech as a first year student with more than 90 credit hours, you can take up to nine credit hours pass fail. And they have to be in the hashtag pattern. And remember pass fail classes do not count towards your GPA. So if you pass them, great, you get credit, but no GPA points. If you fail them, too bad, you don't get credit, but no, no GPA points, okay? So, um, and Remember that you can change the grade mode, so you can change from pass fail to letter grade or vice versa from letter grade to pass fail up to drop day. So up to this Saturday, let's say that you're taking an approved elective or you know, you're taking a science elective or something, and you say, you know what, I know I'm gonna get a C in this class, but I really don't wanna see my GPA. You can change from grade, from letter grade to pass fail. Or let's say you started out taking that humanities elective pass fail, but you're like, man, I am rocking this. I'm getting an A in this class. Then you can change from pass fail to letter grade. But you do have to submit a form. So don't wait until Friday at four o'clock because it'll be too late. Uh, if you know that you want to change your grade mode or if you want to drop a class, if you know that you want to do that, go ahead and do it now. Okay. Questions about uh, your pass fail options versus C or better, D or better. Requirements, anything at all? As of now, no questions. Oh, here's right. one. Can I change yep. grade mode for science elective? Yes, you can. If it's yes, you can. that way. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's the other thing. The, the class has to be offered pass fail. We can't give you pass fail credit if the class isn't offered that way. For example, wellness isn't even offered pass fail. So even if we wanted to give you, we couldn't because they don't, it's only offered for a letter grade. But a lot of your electives will be offered pass fail. So yeah, you can change that grade mode and go ahead and do it now uh, because the, the um, deadline is coming up Saturday. So don't wait. Um, okay, the other, well, what's, what yeah. about special topics? Um, normally special topics are not offered pass fail, um, right. not ECE special topics courses. Right, they're only offered letter grade, yeah. Yeah, so if a, if a class is not offered pass-fail, then it, the point is moot because you can't take a class pass-fail that's not offered that way. And you'll, you'll see it in Oscar it, when you select, it, there will be an option for the grade mode. 
Uh, if there's no option for the grade mode, then you would have to take it letter grade. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen any special topics classes that are offered past fail. And just remember, if a class is in white in this spreadsheet, even if it's offered pass fail, if it's in white, you have to take it for a letter grade. Now, you only have to get a D or better, but you do have to take it for a letter grade. The other thing that I want to caution you all about, if you are taking a class pass fail, make sure you ask the professor what is considered passing. Because for some profs, a D is passing, but for some, a C is passing. And you don't want to get, and then make sure you know what the cutoff is for a C. And again, not that we're aiming at Ds, but I wouldn't want you to think that you're passing when you're not. We did have a student who had to stay an extra semester because he got a D in a pass-fail class. And so he, he did not pass it. The prof was like, no, a D is not passing, and he wouldn't change it. If the student had taken the class letter grade, he could have graduated because a D would have satisfied the requirement. But because he got a D and, and he didn't pass, he didn't pass the class from a pass fail perspective, he had to stay and take, he had to stay another semester to get that credit. So uh, make sure you know what passing is. Again, we're not aiming for Ds. But if a D happens, yeah. All right, any other questions? Not at this time. All right. Uh, when you all are doing your coursework planning, also on the ECE site, so ece.gotech.edu, I'm showing you uh, academics and then courses. You'll see how the special topics are here. Uh, you see how you can look for course numbers, and then you can also look at the projected course schedule for both undergrad and grad. So I just clicked on undergraduate. There it is. So the undergraduate projected course schedule is here. So just ece.gotech.edu, academics courses is there. And you'll see the, the course schedule through right now, spring of 2022. The takeaway, I'll make it a little bit bigger so you all can see it. Uh, the, the takeaway is uh, the, you, all of the required classes are offered every semester with the exception of the senior design sequence. They're not offered in the summer, okay? But all of your required classes are gonna be offered fall, spring, and summer. However, for your, for your um, elective courses, what you're looking for is the pattern, right? So like 4781 is only taught in the fall. Uh, 4782 is only taught in the spring, as an example. So you're looking for the pattern. If a class is never taught in the summer, don't count on taking it in the summer. And you'll see that a lot of a lot of the elective courses are not taught in the summer. They're only taught fall and spring. And then for some, it's only going to be taught fall or spring. Okay. So uh, keep that in mind. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay, all right, uh, so, and these are right now grouped by technical interest, but they still translate to the threads, it's the same courses. So if you see a class in the threads that you want to take, just look for them here, and that way you'll see if they're offered fall, spring, or, you know, if they're fall or spring or both, okay? All right, questions about electives, okay? All right, keep the questions coming if other things come up. Remember that Georgia Tech, uh, actually the University System of Georgia, GT, has a 36 hour rule. The last 36 hours of your degree have to be taken at Georgia Tech. And it doesn't matter what those classes are. They can be at Tech or an affiliate program. So let's say we are able to study abroad by summer. If you went to GT Lorraine or you know a GT affiliated program, those would count. But if you are within those last 36 hours, and let's say you just have 
some approved electives to take and you, you want to take them at you know your the, the local school in your home if they're within the last 36 hours of your degree they won't count so just keep that in mind as you are planning out your last semesters at georgia tech the last 36 hours do have to be taken at georgia tech uh, for advising we no longer have walk-in hours right now, but uh, they can't make an appointment, correct, Ms. Ellaby? Correct. Yes, we. Right. Yes, you can make um make an appointment through Advisor Link, or um through Canvas. And can Advisor Link? Can you drop that link in the chat for Advisor? Uh, okay. All right. Let me see if I can get it. All right. <laughs> now the <laughs> other options of so at this point because you all are in 3030 you can apply for the georgia tech bsms program if we <laughs> if you have a 3.5 gpa you are in that is the the hard requirement you have to have a 3.5 at the time of application and a 3.5 at the time of graduation and you have until drop day of next semester, so drop day of spring, to apply. The benefit of the BSMS program is you, you get your master's in one year. You can double count up to six credit hours towards both degrees. And we say up to six because it depends on how you take the classes, but it is possible. We do have a required course that all master's students have to take in, in, in entrepreneurship. And that required course is for BSMS students as well as the students who are taking the traditional masters, but you would get your masters in, in one year. The other benefit, the real benefit of the BSMS uh, is if you are a BSMS student, you don't have to compete. So you're only competing against yourself and your own GPA versus if you apply for the traditional masters, if you go the traditional route, then you're competing against everybody who wants a masters at Georgia Tech, right? And if you are interested in a PhD, would love to hear from you, but do apply for the PhD program. You do not need a master's in order to get a PhD. So you can apply straight from the bachelor's to the PhD program. I did not apply. I didn't go through a master's program. I went straight from bachelor's to PhD. Questions about the BSMS program or anything else said so far? Oh, wait, wait a minute, let me see. Oh yeah, um, someone wrote, um, is there any recommendation requirement also, do we have the thesis option? Do you have a thesis option for the master's? Yes, so you can do the master's thesis option. It will take you more time. Most students do the BSMS specifically because you can get out in a year. Uh, the, the benefit is, you know, in two semesters you're out, but if you wanted to do the thesis option, it would probably take you an additional semester because you're adding research to your course load. And research just takes time in order to get enough work for a thesis. Very, you know, you're, you're not gonna get enough work for a thesis in a single semester. So, but yes, that, that is an option to you. Also keep in mind, you don't have to apply through the BSMS. You can always apply for the traditional masters. And we actually have, yeah, we've lowered the GPA requirement uh, to a 325 instead of a 35. So uh, if you want the traditional MS option, especially if you're considering the thesis, the traditional option might be a good route to go. Um, we don't have to, and the benefit now, um, if you do the BSMS, you don't have to take the GRE, uh, but, and you don't pay the application fee. If you do the traditional master's application, you still don't have to take the GRE, but you will pay the application fee and you need more letters of recommendation. Okay, someone asked, how does the GTA work for the BSMS? All right, the GTAs are typically given to PhD students. There's a finite number of graduate teaching assistantships and they start with the PhD students and then work their way down. So if you are a master's student, because keep in mind, the BSMS only matters while you're a BS student because that means it gives you the option to take grad level classes as a bachelor student and it gives you the option to double count credits. Once you're in the master's program, the BS is done. You're a master's student just like everybody else. Master's students don't typically get GTAs. There just aren't enough to go around. 
you can get a GTA as a master's student if a professor specifically requests you. It's just a lot less likely. Okay. Uh, we, the, because the funding just typically goes to the PhD students. Not to say that you can't, there are master's students who do have GTAs, it's just a lot less likely. And the way that we select the master's student is the professor knows you and says, I want that student, even though you're a master's student, and then you get assigned as a GTA to that professor. Okay, someone asked, can you explain what the special topics class is for? One more time. What is a special topics special class? Top yeah, they asked, can you explain the special topics class one more time? Well, what we were saying about special topics classes is that they're not offered pass fail. Did you have a specific question about a special topics class? Okay, all right, well, let's see if they respond. And after that, someone asked, is the 3.5, for example, if you have a 3.47, would it round up? Nope, the 3.50. 3.50. Yep, a three seven is a three four seven is not a three five. There is there is no rounding. So it's three five oh or above. You can have a three five one, but a three four nine, no. Okay, and then someone asked, so BSMS doesn't require recommendations. I wasn't sure if there was a requirement for at least one. Oh yeah, yeah. What's you that? you have one. There there is one. One letter of recommendation. So the, the streamlined application means the, the standard application requires three letters, the BSMS only requires one letter. Okay, and someone asked, where do you apply for the BSMS? Well, that's on the graduate. Yeah. Yeah, on, on the, the graduate the ECE, oh, website. Yeah, on the grad website. The ECE graduate website is where you would apply for the BSMS. And the question about the uh, special topics, he said, what is usually covered in the special topics class? Oh, it depends on what special topics class you take. So the, the special topics classes are mm -hmm. across the board from 1,000 level to 6,000 level. It, it completely depends on which course you take. So uh, if you, I'm going to go back to the ECE site. And uh, so you see on, at ece.gotech.edu, if you click on academics and courses, there's an option. You see undergraduate special topics showcase and then graduate special topics showcase. Uh, let me see. Oh, my, my laptop is not showing it. But you'll also see it in registration. There are special topics courses being offered each semester. And you, you look at the course name and the course description, and that tells you what the topic is being it is. So you see, as an example, 3894 is cryptopic, um, cryptographic hardware for embedded systems. 4803 is digital image processing. There's a mathematical foundations for data science, medical imaging systems, software defined radio. So you see the special topics classes are across the board. They can be any, any number of, of topics. And so that you okay. all know, what we mm -hmm. do is we teach special topics classes before we introduce them permanently into the curriculum. Okay. What were you going to say, Ms. Ellaby? No, I was going. No, I was going. There's another question. Okay. Um, a question, as she said, um, if I complete 3030 this semester and take scene design one next semester, do I have to complete BSMS application by the end of this semester? Yes, not by the end of this semester, by drop date of next semester. So by, it'll be in October, by drop date of the spring, you would have had to apply for the BSMS program. So you can, you can apply now, or you can wait until drop day of spring. But by drop day of spring, you have to have submitted your application. Okay. Another question, all classes for special topics class can be included in ECE three or 4,000 level. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. it can. Yes, yes if, they as can. As long as they it's a be... three or 4,000 level class, by the way. As long as it's a three or 4,000 level class, yes, it will be included in your ECE 3XX, 4XXX electives. Yes. Because we do have special topics class. Like right now I'm teaching one 1871, but it's a 1,000 level class, so obviously. You're not counting a 1,000 level class towards 3,000 level electives. But yeah, as long as it's a, a three or 4K class, 
you can count it towards your electives. Okay, a student asked, um, he wants to apply for the BSMS. I will be graduating in spring 22. When will the graduate application be open for 22-23 school year? So you would apply, it would probably make more sense for you to apply next semester because that's gonna be 21. Uh, but you can indicate when you want to graduate. You still have to apply the semester after you take 3030. So even though you, you don't plan on graduating until 2022, you would still need to apply either this semester or drop day of next semester. And you can just indicate in the application itself when you plan on graduating. Okay, here's another one asking, when looking for the BSMS application, at, um, they are asking for three recommendations. Is that right? No. Yeah, I think That's, you're on the regular master's application. You're not looking at the joint BSMS application. Yeah, the joint BSMS application only requires one letter of recommendation. It doesn't require three. So just double check that. All right, here's the other piece of advice that I recommend you all consider. Um, there is a thing in engineering called a professional engineer, PE. It is, it's a license. So it's the equivalent of, say, passing the bar if you're a lawyer or passing your boards if you're a doctor. However, it's not required for engineers to be professional engineers. The process for becoming a professional engineer is one, graduate from an ABET accredited school, Georgia Tech, you get a Georgia Tech degree, you check that box. Two, you pass the fundamentals of engineering exam. Three, you get required years of work experience. That work experience is dependent on each state. It's anywhere from two to five years. And then you take the principles of practice exam. So um, what I recommend you all do, Professor Callen told me this when I was an undergraduate student, even if you have no intention or desire whatsoever to become a professional engineer, I recommend that you take the fundamentals of engineering exam your last semester at Georgia Tech. And the reason, number one, if you take the exam the last semester at Georgia Tech, you're going to pass it. Georgia Tech very well prepares you for the exam. And number two, you never know what job you're going to get in the future that will require you to be a professional engineer. You never, ever know. And if you take it now, you're gonna pass it. The exam never expires, so you'll always have it passed. If you never decide to become a PE, you you know you just spent eight hours taking a test, no big deal. But if you if you get a job that requires you to become a PE in the future, you've already passed this exam, and it's easy to pass it now. It will not be easy to pass it later, I promise you. Just personal testimonial. I was so glad I listened to Dr. Callen. Uh, he told my class to take it. I took the exam my last semester. I was not a great Georgia Tech student. I'm just going to throw that out there. And I did not study for this exam. I don't recommend not studying for exams, but it just so happened I did not study and I passed. And I was not the type of student who could take an exam without passing, I mean, without studying. I, I wasn't that type of student, but this one, because it's so general and Georgia Tech very well prepares you. The other thing is there's not a passing threshold. It's just that you have to do well enough. You have to do better than like, you know, 30% or 40%, some percentage. The, the, the passing body decides. There's some percentage who's gonna fail. You just have to do better than them. So you just have to do better than the non-Georgia Tech engineer who's taking the test beside you. That's just the way it is. And um, so I took the test and passed it and I don't know, through the score somewhere. And I'll be darned if 10 years later, I didn't get a job that required me to be a professional engineer. Who knew? And it was a consulting job at that. Who knew that a consulting role would require a professional engineer? And I was so glad that I had taken and passed that test. I was so glad because the next thing is just to take the principles of practice exam. The work experience took care of itself. Um, my colleague across the hall though, spent months studying for the FE because he didn't have someone to tell him, just take it, just take it when he was an undergrad. And so he spent months and months and months. He probably spent six months studying for the exam. And unfortunately, if he had failed the exam, he would have lost his job. So there's a lot more riding on it. The stakes are a lot higher. 
So I do recommend that you take the fundamentals of engineering exam, even if you have no desire to become a professional engineer, because in the future, if you get a job that requires it, you would have already passed that exam and it's one less thing to, one less thing to stress over. Questions about anything, anything else? Okay, okay, here's someone to ask if they're in the class covering the fundamentals of engineering exam to prepare for. Are there classes covering the FE that you can prepare for? Uh, Professor Callen actually teaches a class specifically to help you prepare for the fundamentals of engineering exam and the, the PE exam. So he's a good person to talk to, but uh, it's, it's a very general exam. So there's some circuits, there's some thermodynamics, there's some statics, there's some digital signal processing. It's very, very general exam. Uh, so if you're not taking a class specifically for that, it would be diff you're, you're going to pull from 10 different books to study. But um, Professor John Callen, I think that's, that's, that's Callen's first name, isn't it, John? That's funny to me, Dr. Callen. Russ, yeah. Russ, 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 that's William, right. Yes, yes, it's, it's William, really, it's William right. Callen. William, William yes. Callen, yeah. That's it, yes, William Russell Callen, Dr. Callen. It's uh, interesting. Your professors, you always call them doctor, even after you get your doctorate. I, I just would not feel comfortable. It would feel like calling my dad by his first name, <laughs> oddly enough. So he's still Dr. Callen because that's how I knew him. But <laughs> he, uh, William Russell Callen, he's a good person to talk to if you want a, a study course for the, for the FE exam. Okay, here's, okay, here's a student who's still, I mean, BSB is in the education, so when they, when they click on, on, click on, it also wants to enjoy it of that, that's for the DSBS, MS website, it takes, um, it takes them to the, the application. application. So, so he, he would need to contact the ETRAD graduate admission office, office and see what's the, what's the problem. I know, I know there were some issues with there. With there. With the, with the application. Yes. Yeah, contact the grad office because that's an issue with the application. Okay, okay. Here's another case. You take the courses into such an engineering exam through GTET. Uh, no. It's a, it's a whole other governing body. It's, it's like the SAT or the ACT, the MCAT, the LSAT. There's another um, testing body that offers the fundamentals of engineering exam. So you wouldn't take it through GT. It's going to be an external testing body. Okay. All right. I, and I, I'm not sure if you like to see it. BSMS. Okay, so if you're on a co-op okay. in the spring, you still have to apply by the spring drop date. Yeah, so the what the grad office is requesting, even if you are not enrolled, you still need to apply by drop day of the semester after you take 30, 30, or 30, 40. That's what the grad office has requested. So even if you're co oping in the spring, you still need to apply by drop date in the spring. Yes. Yes. Okay. When you say where do we apply to take these tests, uh, Kat, do you mean the fundamentals of engineering exam? Where do you apply to take the FE exam? Uh, yeah. Okay. You would just Google it. FE. <laughs> yeah. You Google fundamentals of engineering exam and you'll see sites. You used to be able to go and take it in person, but I'm sure now it, that's not the case. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Just the link there. Yeah. put the link in the chat. Yeah. It's um so you would see how to how to take it virtually now. Okay. Other questions. Okay. All right. If that's it, then that's all. No other questions. All right. Then I am going to, you all can drop off uh, and I'll just wait for the next class to start. So Ms. Ellaby and I will leave our screens up, but you all are, are welcome to head out and thank you all for asking great questions. Uh, and I hope, I hope this helps you in making your decision for what classes to register for um, when registration opens very, very soon. All right, see y'all later.